So let's talk about independent assortment, which is a very important process that happens during meiosis 1. So remember in metaphase 1 of meiosis 1, chromosomes, meaning homologous chromosomes, have to assort themselves so that in anaphase they can move apart. So let's t talk about a cell that, and let's use three sets of homologous chromosomes instead of our normal 23. And let's say that after S phase of interface, these chromosomes have already been duplicated so that we have three of these pairs of homologous chromosomes that we will have to separate and divide. So the question becomes, if this is the metaphase plate, how are these pairs of homologous chromosomes going to line up? Because whichever way they line up, that is the way they will move during anaphase 1. And there may be some crucial differences between maternal and paternal homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are similar in that they have exactly the same genes, but they may have different versions or alleles of the same genes. So you may have a situation where one homolog carries the big A version and the other homolog may carry the small A version. So depending on which side of the line you put the big A's versus the small A's, that can make a difference as far as what goes into the daughter cells of meiosis 1. So you can think of each of these pairs of homologous chromosomes as a line dancing couple. And what happens is each of these couples carries a coin and each will toss their own coin to figure out which side of the line to line up at. So let's say that the first couple tosses heads and that means boy on the left, girl on the right. Let's say that the second couple tosses tails. So boy on the right, girl on the left. Notice that the second couple did not do whatever the first couple did. If the boys had lined up on the same side and the girls on the other based on only the first coin toss, that would have been dependent assortment. That is not what this is. This is independent assortment. So every couple does its own coin toss. Let's say that the third tosses heads again in order to figure out which way to line up. And whichever way they line up, that's how they end up in the daughter cells. So notice that my daughter cells each do have a complete set of three chromosomes, but clearly they are different in terms of the mixture of maternal and paternal um, DNA or chromosomes. Now, every time we do meiosis in our bodies, we have the same starting material the chance that we end up with exactly the same two daughter cells in a second meiosis, starting with the same parental cell, which is what we do every time our bodies do meiosis, the chances of that in our case with our 23 sets of chromosomes is 1 in 2 to the power of 23, which works out to be 1 in about 8 million. So if you put all of my egg cells in a bag and pull out one, set it aside, pull out the next one, you have a 1 in 8 million chance of pulling out the same egg cell twice. Um, the same, of course, goes for sperm cells. So um, if you add in the fact that fertilization is random, the chance that you pull out the same egg cell is 1 in 8 million. The chance that you pull out the same sperm cell is 1 in 8 million. So the chance that a, s a single couple has the same child twice, meaning the same egg cell and the same sperm cell, which means we have to use the rule of multiplication, that chance now becomes 1 in 64 trillion. So just because of independent assortment alone, it is no wonder that you are you and you only.